Hey everybody, welcome back to The Layout. We've got a great episode again for you here. It's going to consist uh, mainly of switching operations along the branch line. We have our crew here at the yard office with uh, BNSF 1481, the former uh, BN GP15, as well as uh, BNSF 1646, which is uh, an ex-Santa Fe GP7. Okay, we're coming across our maintenance road out of the uh, engine track. This track uh, originally was going to be an industry along uh, along the main line here on to your left, uh, but it just seemed to be better suited for a an engine track uh, slash uh, yard crew track. Uh, you can see as we're shoving out uh, of the yard track onto uh, main one, we're going to have to cross over on them from main one to main two, and then get into the yard to pick up our cars. These cars have been set out already by our yard crew during another operating session. So all this crew has to do is come into the, uh, the yard here and pick up the, the loads that are going to be taking down to the branch line. And as you can see here, uh, coming across, we're going to be crossing over from track one to track two. And this is a fairly typical operation when you're, when you're the local crew. You're going to have to negotiate the two main lines to get over to the other side uh, where the yard tracks are. So here we are at CP Preciado. This is a, a crossover, one of the main crossovers that you're going to use to go from track track one to track two or vice versa. And then uh, as you can see, the, the shoving platform here, which is a ex Santa Fe caboose, is uh, going across the track. Uh, I'm sorry, the switch here that uh, the crew is going to use to get into the yard. So now we're going to wait for a signal here from the dispatcher to pull ahead through CP Preciado. And as you can see, we do have a technical difficulty here with this signal. I think a couple wires are touching. Uh, so that typically, we, you wouldn't see that uh, with the, uh, the yellow and the red coming on here on the right track. So passing through CP Preciado, the crew is now going to pick up its cars, which uh, is they're passing right now. Looks like we've got... Uh, Let's see, we've got uh, probably six cars here, uh, a load for this team track, a load for BASF, a lumber load for Weber Plywood, and a loaded box car of paper for Kimberly Clark Paper Company. And now we're back, we're on main track two, and uh, the crew is now going to drop off the shoving platform here, and then shove into the yard to pick up the loads. Picked up a couple cool little uh, detail uh, things here. Uh, you can see it was an ice machine and a, uh, uh, a vending machine that's uh, got water in it for the crew. And it's adding nicely to the detail. And now our local crew, having dropped off the shoving platform, is now going to go across the switch here and then uh, throw the switch here and shove into the yard. It looks like our conductor's out, ready to throw the switch. It's gonna go into the yard lead here. And got the switch thrown and gonna enter the yard. All right, got the three, three whistle for a uh, reverse move. Sixteen forty six is a an Athern Genesis GP seven U. Runs really well. It's a non sound unit, and uh, our fourteen eighty one here is an Athern Genesis GP fifteen with uh, tsunami sound. Uh, they run absolutely great together, and have been my one of my favorite uh, uh, engines locomotives to use for for our local duties. All right, we've connected up to our, our loads that have been, like I said, been set up by the yard crew and going to be uh, taken out and hook up the shoving platform. All right, so as uh, our cars clear the yard, you can see here, uh, these are a couple of scale trains, the newest releases. It's a, uh, their 82-foot uh, reefer as well as the uh, uh, coil car with the mismatched coil shields, which I thought were really cool. Okay, you can see our, uh, our ex, uh, 
cotton belt box car. It's uh, going to the team track, a uh, tank car for BASF Chemical, the lumber load for uh, Weber Plywood, and our, our last uh, box car there is uh, paper loads for uh, Kimberly Clark. Okay, last thing the, the crew has to do now is uh, connect up to their shoving platform. And the reason why we have a shoving platform on this local is because uh, you'll see once we get into the, the branch line, there is quite a, uh, a long shove of the entire train all the way basically from the beginning to the end of the branch line. And uh, what the crew is doing here now is uh, they're going to shove just a little bit past uh, CP West Ortega. That's the signals that you see that the locomotive is passing right now. They're going to get behind there and uh, call the dispatcher for a, a lineup to cross over from track two to uh, track three, which is the track that uh, will head down the two and a half percent grade to the lower level and then eventually into the branch line. Okay, so we have a uh, have our uh, signal from the dispatcher uh, telling the crew that they can proceed to the next signal, which will be red and that's at uh, CP Summit. You can see here on the left, uh, working on some uh, backdrops. Uh, I haven't had good luck uh, lately with the with the backdrops, but uh, we're getting some more printed up down at Walgreens. And I think we're going to go from paper to vinyl. Uh, vinyl seems to work a lot better uh, than, the, than the paper printouts that we get from Walgreens. So we're going to give that a try. Okay, here we go. We're at uh, CP Summit, and we're going to be crossing over to Track 3, which is going to take us down the hill, down to the branch line. I think you could hear uh, in the background there just a minute ago, it sounded like a real train. Well, it is a real train. We do uh, we do live about 100 feet from the BNSF main line here in Southern California. So if you hear that kind of thing, like some of the stuff, obviously, you know, I dub in real train sounds uh, to kind of add to the effect. Uh, but occasionally you hear a real one go by, which is, uh, which is, which is pretty cool. All right, so now we've begun the 2.5% uh, descent down to the bottom level, crossing an intermediate signal. For, it was flashing yellow and knocked it down to red. And our crew member is already ready to ride the shove. He's already in the back of the shoving platform. Okay, if you remember from a previous video, that uh, tunnel there you see the BNSF locomotive sticking out. Uh, that's our, our lead that goes into the other garage that uh, we can add a module, a modular system that can add another uh, considerable length to our mainline run. So that's actually going through the wall into the other garage. Crossing our main street here. We're making pretty good time. Typically, we'll have uh, other mainline trains running, and uh, as a lot of you know, our local crews don't get the highest priority. So sometimes, you're, when you're on the local crew, just to get from the yard to the branch line takes a considerable amount of time, having to wait for mainline trains. This is one of our customers that we're going to be spotting here is BASF Chemical. Uh, you could typically spot about four cars here and there's two different spurs that go in here and here you, you could you could see previously there the 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 empty spur that's where that black tank car is going to that black and uh white tank car is going to go but they also get uh cryogenic cars they get lpg cars and, the, and a host of other type of uh chemical uh tank cars into the basf facility Okay, we're here approaching the Metrolink Depot. We have a, uh, a westbound uh, BNSF intermodal train that is awaiting a, tr a crew change. So we're able to get, get past it pretty quick with the local.
So we do run Metrolink uh, commuter operations as well, which adds to the, uh, the madness of an operating session, which is it's a lot of fun. Just starting to add some uh, more, more shrubbery and bushes and things like that. These are these ones that you see here. I actually picked up from Hobby Lobby uh, for seven bucks. It was there was a ton of uh, uh, shrubs and things like that, that the sagebrush and things like that that uh, are adding it, economically, it, it, mainly uh, the economical factor of those <laughs> of those cheap bushes actually uh, have really helped us out. Uh, putting in more vegetation all right so we have our conductor jumped out once again now this is the uh the, the lead that goes into the branch line it's a hand throw switch it used to be uh used to have a signal here but now we only have a signal that that uh, you'll hit when you uh exit the branch line and enter CD ctc territory once again so now they begin to shove uh it's going to be a considerable uh distance from uh, where they start here, it's going to go all. We're going to go all the way to the end of the branch line. This is one of our main uh, railroad crossings that uh, you'll go through on the branch line. And you can see in the background now we have a uh, UP utilizing trackage rights, uh, UP manifest train. It's in the background here. Now we have a cool little whistle uh, that's on the uh, the Athern uh, caboose or Chevy platform that's uh, got sound on it. So you can actually blow the whistle. It's got, uh, you can listen to crew chatter, uh, bell, and so forth. So it's a pretty, pretty neat little model. Yeah, I haven't got a chance to uh, run a lot of trains lately. I've been busy with other projects. Uh, if you follow my channel uh, at all, uh, you'll get, you can see that uh, I was just down in the uh, uh, very south part of California in a city called El Centro. And there's a, uh, a Navy base there that the Blue Angels have to be practicing at. They do their winter training there and fly the F-18s and do practice air shows. So was able to get down there and uh, spend a couple days down at the base. I was able to stay on base, which was really nice, being uh, that I'm retired Air Force. So having the ability to stay down there at the base and to see these incredible jets and these pilots fly these uh, these F-18s uh, was a, absolutely amazing. So it was it was a it was a good little trip to get away from home for a little bit, and uh, you know brought the family with me, and and we had a great time and. Uh, if you can check out the video, it's it's absolutely amazing, and it was a lot of fun. And uh, my hats off to those guys and, and gals that that uh, fly those those jets are super super cool. Okay, so you can see here the branch line parallels the main uh, for a little while here. Um, we have our we have our local shoving down to the end of the branch line as the uh, UP uh, train passes on to its right. Now, when we do the operating sessions, uh, there's really no, uh, as far as the switching, it, it's just kind of a random deal uh, as far as whatever the yard crew wants to set out to go for the for the local crew to grab. I, I try to keep everything equal as far as when these industries get served, but sometimes these some of these industries don't get served for a month or so <laughs> because we're we're doing other things with the layout, but. We'll typically run, uh, our typical local train is, yeah, five, six, seven, sometimes eight cars, depending on where they're going. And so today we're, like I said, our first stop's gonna be uh, Kimberly Clark, where you see that uh, that red box car there, it's gonna be going to. We have a, an empty, I believe, to pick up, an empty box car at Kimberly Clark, and we'll drop off the load, so. Kimberly Clark can take up to two boxcars at a time, uh, just depending on what we have going. But uh, lately, it's just been uh, kind of a one-for-one -one swap on in, in most of the industries, for that matter. 
So we'll we'll come in with five or six box cars and leave with five or six box cars. Which isn't a lot, and you wonder why hey why we run in two locomotives on the on the local and, 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 and mainly it's just for the grade coming back. It's a pretty steep grade coming back up to the yard at two and a half percent. So even just with you know five box cars and a and a shoving platform with a caboose there, it's 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 pretty difficult for one locomotive. So we always run with two, sometimes with three, depending on uh, the horsepower needs. But the more in locomotives we have, the more cars, it, it, it gets pretty tight on, uh, on the branch line. So now we kind of come all the way around. Um, we're passing, uh, there's Weber plywood there on the right. And then uh, that's the switch there you'll see for uh, uh, Kimberly Clark, which is, uh, they make all kinds of paper products, paper towels, toilet paper, you name it. They produce it out of here. And Kimberly Clark, as you can see, uh, is still kind of a mock-up, but it seems to work for now because I, I don't do a lot of modeling. Uh, it's not high on my priority as far as, I mean, as far as structures. I, I'm, I'm really into the op, more of the operational aspect of, of actually doing the switching and, and operating sessions. So so as, a, as I get time, I, I work on the, on the models themselves, the buildings, as you can see, uh, you'll see. I just finished the uh, Unified Grocers, which is a, a grocery warehouse, a distributor of, of uh, grocery products. So that's been fun. You can see we still have to do backdrop back there and some ballasting. So it's coming along slowly but surely. You know, still working full time and and uh, you know a lot of other commitments. But uh, I'm, I'm fortunate my family loves model railroading too, uh, especially my two sons. We come out here quite a bit and uh, do operating sessions. We'll have other friends come over. Uh, so it, it's, more, it's a lot of operations and not a lot of, uh, of, of actual modeling as far as the, the structures and, and backdrops and stuff like that. But it gets done, but just a lot slower pace. All right, so we have our uh, empty uh, TTX box car here that we're going to pull out, and then, uh, like I guess, like I said, this is going to be a one-for-one -one swap. So uh, we'll take out the empty, empty box car here. That was my uh, Digitrax throttle shutting down, that beeping. Uh, yeah, TTX, TTX box cars coming out, and uh, we'll put the uh, UCRY box car in to be unloaded, and then hopefully in less than a month we'll, we'll come back and, and pull that empty <laughs> so like i said some of these cars will sit here for a while uh just not getting switched out but uh, i try to do i try to do as much as possible and you know a lot of you know a lot of the operating sessions i'm not actually videoing so uh you'll see different cars at different spots <laughs> between between videos so uh this is actually one of my very favorite shots on the layout here, you're gonna have uh, you're gonna have uh, the box car here come right into your living room here. Uh, I just love that curve coming around here and the the you know put some uh, wheel screeching in. It's very very cool, very much reminiscent of what I used to watch when I was a kid, watching them switch cars uh, on these branch lines around here in Southern California. All right, looks like we're all ready for a hook here, hopefully. Yeah, pretty good, pretty good. It's always so gratifying when it comes in and, and it hooks up right away because sometimes they're not lined up, couplers aren't lined up, and they go off to the side, and it is what it is. I know it happens on a real railroad too sometimes, but um, all right. Conductor's busy on this job, uh, throwing switches uh, back and forth. And now we have our uh, our load finally here, boxcar load spotted, or coming up for a spot. And you know, like I said, sometimes we'll get two boxcars in here. 
So it just, it just depends on, you know, what you come in and what you want to operate. If you want to come in and, and do the yard crew slash helper crew, you come in and you can build whatever local train you want. It's just that you got to know where, obviously, where each car gets spotted. And then, but some of our, some of our industries get neglected sometimes and everybody keeps wanting to go here or the, or BASF, but the team track and the lumber yard, a lot of times get neglected for, I don't know why, but cause they're all fun to switch, but uh, we'll have empty center beams in the lumber yard for, <laughs> for quite a long time. So, uh, we got to give them some love as well. And keep the customers happy. <laughs> so I haven't figured out the kit that I want to use yet for Kimberly Clark. I just I just don't know. Um, I have some Walters kits that I could possibly kit bash, but uh, I need to get inspired. <laughs> so. All right, so success on our first uh, industry. We're gonna get moving on here. Now, at this point when I was videoing, it was getting late, so I decided to tie the train down here uh, for the night. So we're gonna move along to the next day. We have the, the train all ready to go. Uh, the, the crew's been swapped out, as you, you'll see here. Uh, got a new crew in, dropped them off here for uh, for a return trip, we got we got a couple more industries to serve on our way back. So here we go. Our next customer is uh, Weber Ply, which you can see, which is right here in front of you. I think we're gonna pull actually three empties and spot one load. So we're gonna we're gonna come back with with more cars back to the yard than we left with. So you can see some of those shrubs that, uh, those are all, that's all from uh, Hobby Lobby. And we got a ton of it for, for really, really not that much money. Okay, see our, uh, our little uh, crossover there, be, which splits the, uh, I call that the grocer's lead, the one that's coming straight towards us, because that uh, goes on the Unified Grocers, and you got the lumber lead which intersects it there right next to the road. So now we're gonna set up for, uh, we're gonna pull those three three empties out of Weber Plywood and spot the one lumber load. And like I said, like it just, the yard crew decided to put one lumber load in. So sometimes there's one, sometimes there's three or, or none, just if we're not going there. And you can see that so the challenge, uh, which is part of the fun, the challenge of switching the branch line is you have uh, so many facing point switches and trailing point switches. So, so you kind of have to figure out how you're going to work it because at some point you're going to end up with cars on both ends of the uh, of your train. We've actually done operating sessions where we'll have two separate locals leave out of the yard. And uh, one local switches all the trailing point switches and the other local switches all the, the facing point switches. So uh, it, it makes it kind of fun. You're, you're, you got two locals on the branch line at the same time. So I think I'll, I'll uh, do that in, a, in a, a future episode. I think it'll be a lot of fun for you guys to see how we do two locals at the same time on, on, uh, on the branch. All right, so we've entered uh, Weber Plywood, and we have uh, on this track here we have two empty uh, center beams. That, uh, like I said, have been here for oh I don't know a month or so, so they'll be happy to get uh, new cars. See, and that didn't couple, uh, so we'll have to fix that, couple it up, and hook up to our second center beam.
All right, uh, here we go. We're gonna go out, and you can see the uh, the empty bulkhead flat car there that uh, I actually built a, a lumber load for. Uh, and I'll, I don't know if you guys have seen it in previous videos, but uh, once it gets back up into the staging yard, I just all I do is put the loads back in to the the flat cars and, and things like that. Then then the yard crew can come pull them. So these uh, these center beams will probably sit. They'll sit in the yard for a little while, then get then get shoved back in the staging at some point. We'll probably be on a an outbound manifest or something. So they kind of roam around the system before they get put back in uh, as loads. So these this train here that we're building, all the empties will become uh, become part of the, uh, the one of our manifest trains that we run during an operating session, and then they'll get recycled back into. Uh, in, into loads and then uh, pulled by the yard crew and then eventually back on the local train back down to the branch line. So there's a little life cycle of each car and then uh, each car does have a can go to a, a spot here on the branch line, each car that we have on the layout. Now I'm not sure about the, uh, the coil cars that we just got. It could possibly go here actually on this track. But uh, let me know if you guys have any ideas um, in, in the comments because uh, I have these coil cars and I'd love to use them. Okay, so here we go. This is, you can hear the uh, the rumbling of a train that's actually going by by the house right now. That's actually a real train. So uh, it's kind of fun to <laughs> have it in the video. All right, so we have our crazy crew man riding there. Right on the uh, empty bulkhead, and then we're gonna stop here at the switch, and then shove in the uh, drop those empty cars off, and then we'll we'll put the center beam, the loaded center beam in. And cross. Hear that rumble in the background? That's BNSF doing it for real outside. Let's see if we get a good hook here. I don't have good luck with that. Oh, there we go. Okay, good hook. And we'll continue to shove here until we can clear the empty center beams, so we can. Disconnect the load and put it into Weber. So, what do you guys do on your layouts if uh, you have them at home? Do you guys do a lot of switching or do you do mainline operations? I, I try to have a good mix of both because I do I do like a uh, you know I do love doing the switching, uh, the local crew operations as well as but. I, yeah, I do like the the manifests and the intermodal trains and things like that. So I have those running at the same time, and it just kind of the, working the locals and the mainline trains together is challenging. And it just makes operating sessions more fun. You get more people involved. Um, like I said, we'll have uh, typically five or six operators, especially when we have the the modules set up in the other garage where we can we can stage. We could stage you know, three or four mainline trains out there as well, so we can we can rotate operators in in and out of uh, operating sessions. See if our conductor out here is uh, one of our conductors stopping the cars just for safety. All right, we just have one load for Weber. Makes things easy. Yeah, things go nice and quickly when everything, all the switches face the uh, the same direction. Now, what's gonna happen now is uh, we're gonna have to get that tank car and the other box car are gonna have to be put on the other side of the locomotive. I, I wish I had more room on this side of the layout and this side of the branch to have another runaround, but it just didn't work out uh, as far as the planning 
or as far as the room. <laughs> I had the plan, but didn't have the didn't have have the room to put another runaround track. So you have to use this the the one runaround track on the branch line, and that's over on the other side of the layout, unfortunately. So once we get our cars, our other empties hooked up here, we're gonna have to take these two loads down to the runaround and get on the other side of them to be able to spot uh, that uh, X cotton belt uh, box car is gonna be on the uh, the track that you see right on the at the bottom of your screen. That's the that's the lead for uh, the team track, the spur for the team track. And we have a westbound. Here's our westbound uh, intermodal train. Finally getting out of the, uh, getting a crew change and finally getting out. Passing by on, on track one. And we got good hook. All right, so we're doing good on the coupling. Like I said, sometimes we just, we just don't have any luck with that. We'll have to reposition the draw bars and, and try again. All right, so you see the end of our intermodal train. So we're going to have to end up taking these two cars down. Now, uh, some people will do this on the way down to the branch line. They'll already put the, uh, the other two cars on, the two cars that need to go uh, on the other side of the locomotives initially before they head down the branch. Or in this case, they're actually going to uh, switch what they can and then, and then run around the train to switch these last two cars. Uh, the tank car and the box car here that you can see. I actually prefer to do everything when you, as soon as you get into the branch, position all the cars where you want them. But uh, this operation here just seems like we're going to do it uh, after the fact. All right, we have a UP Manifest here waiting at uh, CP Summit. And then we'll get another good look at the, the westbound BNSF intermodal train. All right. A nice KCS uh, GVO, second out. ET44, I believe. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe that's an ET44. With all kinds of different containers. All right, back to the local. We, uh, crew's coming back this way to actually run around the, the box car and the tank car here. This is the run around track that we'll be utilizing. And when you're operating the local, it's it's all up to you how you wanna how you wanna tackle the uh, the spotting of the cars because there there's a million different ways to do it. And I'm sure you guys are looking at it going, oh, I would have done this or that. And I'd love to hear how you guys do it, especially those of you that work for the railroad, because I haven't, <laughs> so I just do it the way that I think it should be done. But by all means, this like I'm open for any suggestions. No matter what we do, it's a lot of fun. So that's what it's all about, right? I'd really like to get the other grade crossing signaled like this one. Uh, I, I, I'm, I'm looking for some more photo cells I need to, to buy. I've got the circuitry for it. And I just need to, like I said, I gotta, I gotta put the uh, photo cells in. Now on the other side there were uh, the, the tunnel is that go to the uh, the other garage and so forth. You know what I'm talking about. There's a grade crossing there. I do have the signals in. They're not hooked up. I'm going to need something like 12 photo cells or something like that for that entire crossing because if you got uh, three main line and a, and a, uh, a branch line to uh, detect uh, for the signals to operate. So it's going to be quite an endeavor. A lot of wiring. A lot of a lot of soldering photo cells to wires and you know all that stuff. I just I wish 
there were more time, but um, fortunately, you know, I do have uh, some very talented modelers that are, are good in uh, many different aspects of, of model rail running. As you know, you need there's so many different skill sets that I just don't have. I had know a little bit about everything, uh, just a little bit to get me in trouble. So um, I really rely on on uh, fellow modelers, and it's always fun to have people over. I you know that's you know the main thing about this is is having fun and and hanging out with your friends. And it's just fun to see how different people run trains. You know, we have friends that are actual, you know, that work for the railroad, that are dispatchers, that are, you know, been around railroads and trains their whole life. Uh, it, it's fascinating to see how different, how many different ways you can do this job. Okay, so the operation here, as you can see, we're gonna we're gonna spot these two cars on the runaround. And then we've got to pick up the other train, go all the way back down, and then we'll we'll go back onto that spur, connect on the other side of that black tank car, as you'll, you'll see here. I don't really have any big projects planned for the layout right now. Uh, I think right now we're we're focusing on just the little details here and there and of course of course we have structures to build uh, but but what we have so far it seems to to do the trick as far as uh, getting getting the look that we want like in the background there we have uh, world citrus now it's just a warehouse and a couple other little buildings are gonna go in so you know, being painted, uh, and then the the little details as far as where the uh, the corn syrup gets unloaded with the with the hoses and and fittings and things like that, and some some uh, warehouse doors signage. I think I said paint, right? Paint it, and uh, you know, just little details around. I'm really happy with the grocery warehouse that we built. And uh, I, I'm excited to get everything else in the works, but it's just the, the time. So just, just uh... but it's so much fun to operate. I really, really have a lot of fun, and and like I said, the family partic participates quite a bit, and very, very fortunate. For instance, that uh, West Preciado sign that you have up there on the top of the top deck there. My wife made those. She designed that, had them printed out. They're on cardstock or a thick cardboard. And we're able to uh, put those up to, to, to let operators know where they are. And, and my wife did that. And people, what, what, where's West Preciado? Where'd you get that from? And um, all of our, most of our names, um, that's... You know, fa old family names, you know, maiden names and family names of our, our family from, you know, from my wife to me and, you know, all of the rest of our family. So that's how, kind of how we came up with uh, the, the control point names and the station names uh, for the layout. Here in the foreground, you can see our uh, loading platforms for BASF Chemical. Like I said, there's four, and they're, they're actually numbered there for so people know where to spot the cars, but there's four spots here, and then one on the other spur, which we're going to be visiting here very shortly. Yeah, that sound, and tsunami sound is, is absolutely great. Uh, I haven't had any issues with it. Now I have uh, uh, Lock Sound and Lock Pilot and a lot of other ones, and they are absolutely great too. They just they're just different programmers. So when we uh, program, we just have to we uh, either use our Lock Programmer or uh, Decoder Pro for our tsunami stuff. That's what we use. Um, but they they play well together. Our Scale Trains and our Athern they they seem to play well together. Um, we don't have too many issues with uh, speed matching. 
but it can be challenging at times. I'm not going to say it's easy. Sometimes it's it takes a while. Yeah, I got a good hook there. Okay, so now we've got we've got our cars where we want them on which side of the train, and now we're gonna have to we're shoving all the way back down the branch line, back to the uh, I call it the, like I said I call it the grocer's lead, and then we'll have a switch off the grocer's lead uh, into the team track. And basically, our team track, like I guess every team track, is a more of a transload facility where we'll transfer from uh, boxcar loads into truck loads. So we have a truck dock as well as uh, uh, a rail dock that can take two cars and and not very often we'll have two cars at the at the team track but we do today and I think um, we're gonna be spotted yeah we just got one box car to, to spot in its place so we're pulling two empties and spotting this one load here so yeah so we got a pretty good train uh, shaping up here to take back to the yard with us but they're all empty and we have plenty of plenty of horsepower up front to uh, get them up the grade. So these shoving platforms are fitted with a whistle that's operated by the conductor, and I believe it just comes off the uh, the train air, and they'll open the open the valve and whistle blows, and uh, it's pretty cool. Okay, so we got our shoving platform. Here's our uh, empty, empty car we pulled from Kimberly Clark, and then our three uh, empty lumber loads. Okay, and our conductor now is positioned at the switch. Once the uh, box car clears here, the clears the switch. We'll throw that and then begin to shove into the team track. Now we have uh, two. Two empty box cars to pull first. Looks like somebody's parked pretty close to the track there. Uh, it looks like we're going to clear. Typical things that the local crew has to deal with on a on a daily basis out here on the branch line, just like the real thing. No. Nope. All right, so we got a reposition here and uh, couple up correctly. And it looks like we've got that done. So here we go, we're pulling the two empty lo uh, the two empty box cars out of the team track. remember from a couple episodes I think that's when we spotted this this PNSF boxcar uh, furniture so you can tell it's been a long time since uh, we've been on these rails here You can see how time consuming uh, being on the local crew is, which is, I'm not complaining about it, but I mean, we're, we're switching out, what, three industries here. And it, it takes a long time. And actually, this is, it's took a lot of time in, you know, really than what you're seeing in the video, you know, from editing and things like that. So, so when you're on the local crew, you're on, you're on duty for quite a long time, which is good. This is another one of my favorite views on the branch line and to shove into the team track going across a, a couple streets over the diamond over the switch this is a lot lot happening here uh, which is a neat view
All right, dropping our load off here at uh, Team Track, and we've got one more customer, which is BASF. And like I said, BASF has got two different spurs that a lot of times will get served on two different locals. So our uh, diligent crew there is blocking traffic, risking their lives out there. And now they're going to have to run over here to the boxcars for, uh, to connect up uh, with the rest of the train. Yeah, so this one lonely lumber car in the Weber, like I said, sometimes they'll have three, and it's a lot busier, but uh, looks like they only required one, uh, one load this time around. See how we do here. So if we get everything lined up. Yes. All right. Very good. All right. So we're gonna connect up here, and then we're gonna head shove further down to BASF, which is our last customer. And at BASF, we don't have any empties to pull, so we just have one load to spot on uh, the second track of BASF, which is, uh, as you can see, our conductor is ready to throw the switch. So we get these two empties out of the way, and we'll be able to shove in the BASF. So a lot more work needs to be done at BASF. I just got the uh, all I've got done so far is the the structure for the for the office done. It's not been painted or or anything like that. So uh, the white tanks that you see uh, were right next to the the spur where we're going to be spotting this car. There's uh, four tanks there, four vertical tanks that actually my son 3D printed uh, on his on his printer for this for this thing. So. We have a lot of detail parts, ladders, uh, railings, fittings, all that stuff that we've got for it to uh, attach to these. But it's just a real nice base to work off of to get these uh, tanks looking uh, more real or you know more realistic as far as uh, the detail. So it's It's a tight turn there, so you get a lot of flange squeal coming around the, uh, the, the, the turn there. This is spot five for BASF. And I think that's right where we're going to leave it, right here. So you see those tanks in the background behind the locomotive and the tank car. Uh, those are 3D printed. Uh, uh, same with the, uh, the jersey barriers. All 3D printed. Super cool. All right, now coming back out of the spur. This track doesn't get used a lot, uh, for whatever reason. We don't, we don't spot a lot of a lot of cars on this track, or and if we do, it, it sits there for quite a while. It seems to get forgotten sometimes. So uh, it's always good to get a new car put in there. It's sad that track sat empty for about a month. Okay, so now we have the opposite problem we did here a moment ago, where now we have we have to put these two empty box cars. We have to run around those and put those into the uh, into the rest of the train. So.
So this is good. So this is one of these uh, instances where we we're going to come back with uh, more cars than we came down there with. So sometimes it, it, it varies. A lot of times it's just a one for one, but in this case, we got more coming back. So. So we'll have six, six empties and a shoving platform to bring back with us. And like I said, we have plenty of horsepower, so no worries there. I think typically we would have seen a Metrolink or two. I don't think they're running today. So that's uh, freeing up the uh, main line considerably. And our track there in the foreground is a, uh, a transload facility that uh, takes hoppers and they'll transfer uh, bulk items into trucks. And then on the other side is uh, World Sisters West, which is a uh, beverage uh, beverage uh, manufacturer and they take uh, usually two tank cars of corn syrup at a time and uh, we'll probably hit them up next time around with the local let's we'll see what the the yard crew has in store for us Get a good look at our center beams and our uh, bulkhead flat. Have our maintenance away. It looks like they're uh, doing some signal work there. Well, I, don't know. We, I don't know if we coupled up there. I'll have to stretch it and see. Yep, I got it. Got it. All right, we've correctly positioned our two empty boxcars. Getting everything ready for a exciting trip back to the back to the yard. Yeah, pretty quiet on the main line. Yeah, I'm really, uh, really thinking about doing the two separate locals at the same time instead of having one. I think that'd be uh, challenging and, and more fun. But this is good, too. You see our two corn syrup cars in World Sisters West back there. Lots more work to be done. And uh, all right, so here we are at the signal here. This is the uh, where our branch line goes back into the main line, and it's also the beginning of... CTC again. So the dispatcher has lined the local out onto the main with a yellow signal. Yeah, depending on the operating session, sometimes you get done with all this switching and then you'll end up sitting here for two or three trains to go by to be able to get back out on the main. So it's a quiet day on the layout. Looks like we just had a couple trains, a uh, couple mainline trains, no Metrolink, and uh, our local for today.
Yeah, pretty tight radius here, just to get a lot of flange squeal from the train. All right, so our local has left the branch uh, for a couple days, I would assume. Now we're able to, now they're on the main, we're able to pick up speed. Keep going a little faster, go across the grade crossing. That's the grade crossing I was talking about, by the way, that uh, I'd like to get signaled uh, with the uh, grade crossing signals, but it, it's going to take a lot of photo cells. So <laughs> I'm, I'm kind of procrastinating getting that going, but I think once I get it, hooked up it's gonna be a lot of fun green signal at the intermediate uh this is the very bottom of the uh the hill and now it's beginning its climb knock it down Okay, now we've, we've found one of our mainline trains, it's 3743, leading a westbound intermodal train. And surprisingly, it is waiting for the local, so that's that's not too common. Typically, a local would have to wait, but uh, looks like the dispatcher's being kind to us. Okay, so now we're on track two up here, and uh, the switch that you see right here it's approaching is the the switch into the yard uh, into the yard it's a hand throw switch you can see it's there it's before the control point so our crew now is just going to pull this string of empty cars from the branch line into the yard and uh, will be later handled by the yard crew that will uh, when it builds the new the new local it will shove these cars into the staging tracks so you won't see these cars for a little while, and uh, they'll all become loads again. See another one of the, uh, the cool signs that my wife made there, East Preciado. Well, I hope you really enjoyed the, uh, the, the layout and the switching operations as much as I did. I, I really appreciate all your support. Appreciate you guys keep coming back uh, and, and watching the videos. I, I, I have a ton of fun making them. Um, and let me know in the comments if you guys want to see anything further. And uh, if you have any questions or comments about any of the things that you see on here, I'd be happy to answer them as best I can. I, I do read all the comments and answer all of them as best I can. And uh, again, thanks a lot. I hope you have a great rest of the week, great weekend. And... Uh, We'll see you again very soon. Thank you.